The Notion. A man with no emotional commitments reassesses his life on his 35th birthday by reviewing his relationships with his married acquaintances and his girlfriends. That's the entire plot. Strings, good times, room hums, company. Late nights, quick fights, fighting games, team talks, long walks, telephone calls. Not shared souls, bared private names, all those photos up on the walls. When it premiered, Company was a musical with a brand new notion. A show with a story, but no plot. They didn't call it a concept musical then, but we'd call it a concept musical now. We call a lot of things concept musicals now, there's a lot of dilution in that term, but Company, like all proper concept musicals, forgoes a plot for sake of a feeling, an essence. <laughs> A bunch of musical scholars will tell you otherwise, but the form and structure of Company is hardly new. You don't have to delve too deep to see the show's vaudeville roots. Who we'll finished yesterday's stew? Who we'll take the kids to the zoo? What is new is, well, the concept. A not particularly linear, vignette-driven show centered around the then somewhat radical ideals of marriage and relationships. Uh, pardon me, is everybody here? Because if everybody's here, I want to thank you all for coming to the wedding. I'd appreciate you going even more. I mean, you must have got some better things to do and not a word of it to Paul. Remember, Paul, you know the man I'm going to marry, but I'm not because I wouldn't ruin anyone as wonderful as he is. Thank you all for the gifts and the flowers. Thank you all. Now it's back to the showers. Don't tell Paul, but I'm not getting married today. Nowadays, the relationship drama of company is sitcom standard. But in 1970, it was fresh, intriguing, challenging, and a little threatening. But the really interesting thing about company for me is that this is a musical that has changed over the past 40 years. Now, I'm not just talking about revisions, although it is important to note that the song Marry Me a Little has only become the act one closer in the past couple of decades, and that productions have an off-again, on-again relationship with the sex dance number TikTok, and that the finale of the show has gone through quite a number of revisions, but this is a musical that has changed in what it's really about. Intentionally or not, the original production was a show about relationships. The focus of the production, at least as reflected in the reviews, were the individual couples and their commentary on late 60s, early 70s, pre- and post-marital relationships. Bobby was looked upon as this strange, almost unnecessary cipher in the middle of it all. I mean, is he gay? Is he stupid? Why is he here? This, in large part, I think, came down to casting. Now, Dean Jones is a fabulous actor, but he was not the original choice. He replaced Anthony Perkins during rehearsals, and despite appearing on the cast recording, Jones only played Bobby for about a month. He was in the middle of a contentious divorce, and well, you can imagine how especially stressful this show could be under those circumstances. His replacement, Larry Kept, is also great, but you can see how the thread kind of gets lost somewhere. So, Company existed as this fabulous discussion of relationships and marriage with this enigma of a character right in the middle. Then, first as a glimmer in the 1995 Sam Mendes production, and then like fireworks in the 2006 John Doyle production, the show changed. Or rather, the concept 
that change. Now, maybe it was audiences increased acceptance of the concept in concept musicals. Maybe it was the elevated platforms that Mendez had the company on at the Don Mar, or maybe it was Raul Esparza's kazoo. But somehow the show shifted from being vignettes centered around an enigma to a mind tornado birthed from one of the most multifaceted protagonists in contemporary musical theater. No longer a story of a man experiencing these dinner dates through his life. Now, Company is a story set inside the mind of Bobby. It's right there in Sondheim's synopsis. A man with no emotional commitments reassesses his life on his 35th birthday by reviewing his relationships with his married acquaintances and his girlfriends. Compare that to the pervasive and kind of difficult to source older, more generic description of the original show. Set firmly in and often about New York, Company follows five married, once married, or soon to be married couples and their mutual friend Robert, a 35-year-old bachelor who has been unable to connect in a long-term relationship. The relationships are presented in a series of vignettes, primarily through Bobby's eyes, so that we see the less than ideal aspects of commitment. It is this shift in focus, this shift in concept from a show about these couples and their relationships as seen through Bobby's eyes to a show about Bobby seeing these couples' relationships that has forever changed company. In a lot of ways, this is a show that is almost two different shows. Now, Every time you put on a show, it's a little bit different. Your Thursday night performance is different from Sunday's matinee. 1970's opening is different from a 2006 revival. This is due, of course, to different audiences, different public views, different ways we view the world and how those have changed. That's one of the things that makes theater, that makes musical theater so wonderfully interesting and dynamic. And that's one of the things that makes Sondheim's musical theater so wonderful. Thanks for watching. This video, a video discussing the changing focus of company over the years was a suggestion from my patrons on Patreon. There's a special suggestion box you get access to as a patron. If you want to support me, if you want to support the things I do and this channel, check out my Patreon. It really means so much when people help me out and it really does help me out. It helps me pay rent, helps me, you know, buy food, things like that. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. I'll see you later.